exuberant, and enthusiastic. Jehovah's Witnesses have this broadcasting thing they do every month that basically acts as a propagandistic communication route for them. I did an analysis of the first part of it a few weeks ago. Well, I decided to go through a little more of it and I found some interesting stuff. So let's take a look at this clip they put out in the most recent JW broadcasting episode. Let's get into it. I love my brother, and I always wanted to be like him. But those pictures of him partying with kids from school showed he was living a double life. I didn't want to get him in trouble, but I knew I had to say something. I told him he had to tell mom and dad. He warned me not to tell. But Samuel was courageous and did not hide anything, and Jehovah himself was with him. I couldn't hide this. Talking to my parents wasn't easy, but I knew it was the right thing to do. So what we're looking at here is something called information control and emotional control. I'm sure a lot of you guys know of the bite model if you watch my channel, but I'll give a brief basic summary anyways. The bite model is a model we use to determine if something is a cult or not. It consists of four main categories, behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. It's how cult leadership controls their members. Under each category are a number of different points. What we're watching unfold right now is propaganda put out by the watch Tower Society designed to enforce information control and emotional control, require you to report thoughts, feelings, and activities to superiors, encourage you to spy and report on others' misconduct, shun you if you disobey or disbelieve, threaten your friends and family, teach that there's no happiness or peace outside the group, promote feelings of guilt, shame, and unworthiness. All these points apply to what we're watching right now. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that if you don't report on others' misconduct, like if the kid didn't tell on his brother, he'd be just is guilty, might as well have committed the quote-unquote sins himself. When I was a kid, I remember chaperoning for my brother and his girlfriend at the time. I was like 12. I wasn't a very good chaperone. I just kind of let them do whatever. They went off and did their thing without me sometimes, which is a massive, huge violation. They could be disfellowshipped for going off on their own, depending on the circumstances. Jehovah's Witnesses aren't allowed to be alone in a room with somebody of the opposite sex, which isn't really something you'd think about unless you were actually a member of the religion. It can get pretty complicated sometimes. Dating as a Jehovah's Witness means you aren't allowed to be alone with your girlfriend or boyfriend literally ever. Not until your wedding night. Not one single second alone. They take it seriously. If they have reason to suspect you were alone together before your wedding day, then they won't let you get married in the Kingdom Hall. Which is a huge red flag to people in the congregation that you did something wrong and they should keep their distance from you. Anyways, it ate away at me for years that I let them go off and do their own thing when I was supposed to be responsible for him. Literal years. When I was like 16, my brother told me he talked to the elders about the fact that he and his wife were unchaperoned and it had been dealt with. Who knows if that's true or not? Doesn't really matter anymore because we're all outside their religion and it was a stupid rule to begin with. But they take it very seriously and they instill this sense of guilt that you basically committed the crime just like the other person if you don't tell on them. You're just as guilty. So I completely understand why the kid in this story decided decided to tell his parents. But that's part of the control mechanisms. That's what they're programming their people to do with this video. That's what the video is even for. They want people to feel that guilt, to keep the congregation pure. Their words, not mine. And look at the parents' reaction. What did the kid do? Did he get somebody pregnant? No, he went to a party. It doesn't even say what type of party. It doesn't even say there was alcohol, nothing. He just went to a party with some kids his own age. What are they so depressed about? Why are they reacting like this? It's because the kid's main focus isn't the religion. He's making friends outside the religion, and that's a risk. They can't have that. And what's the result of losing focus on the religion? What's the result of finding other things in life to make you happy or making friends outside of the religion? They're about to tell us. Let's continue. Of course we were proud of Danny. But at the time we were a little distracted. Maybe somehow it was all just a misunderstanding. We needed to know what was going on. We just wanted to help him.
We couldn't help but blame ourselves for what was happening. You become aggressive, angry, and hateful. That's the implication here. The kid said he warned his brother not to tell. He's throwing stuff around, yelling, slamming doors. They're obviously trying to depict this kid spiraling completely out of control because he finds friends outside the religion. Like I said, all we know about this situation is that the kid is forming friendships with people outside the religion. That's it. He looks like he's about 16. I'm not going to assume he's doing anything illegal. If he is, then that has its own set of issues. But it doesn't really matter because Jehovah's Witnesses forbid even the most basic friendships with outsiders, whether there's alcohol involved or not. They are the very definition of helicopter parents. You don't have any privacy. You don't have your own life. You don't have your own friends, your own personality. Everything revolves around the religion, and that's all there is to it. Let's continue. Then we thought back to Samuel's example. Even faithful Samuel had sons who deviated from Jehovah's standards. We wanted to help our son. Just as Samuel didn't alter his course, and Jehovah stood by him, we knew if we did things his way, he'd stand by us. For those of you who wonder what happens when a Jehovah's Witness kid who's under 18 gets disfellowshipped, here's your answer. The parents get really upset and disappointed with them permanently, and they make it excruciatingly clear. You're a failure. You failed. Legally, you have to live with them, but they don't have to like it. Every moment is awkward and painful. They are your parents in name only. They have no respect for you anymore. You don't want to be in common areas. You spend as little time as possible around them. Every time they look at you, you know know they're thinking how much of a fuck up you are. I know the look all too well. I've gotten it from my mom every time I've seen her for the past 13 years. Most of the time, the next step for a disfellowshipped kid who's under 18 is to leave. Go literally anywhere other than there, because looking their parents in the face every day and knowing how they feel about you isn't an option anymore. Some are homeless, some move in with a relative, but one thing is for sure. The moment you move out, contact is over. They don't want anything to do with you ever again, and they flip the situation on you. If you get disfellowship because you got a girlfriend or you have some worldly friends that the religion seriously frowns upon or something, it's your fault. Living your life and being a normal member of society isn't acceptable. You aren't allowed to be John Smith. You have to be John Smith, Jehovah's Witness. And if you slip up and decide to have your own individual identity outside the religion, then you can expect your parents, your brother, your sister, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, your cousins, everybody to blame you for it and to never speak to you again. I really want to start a nonprofit to help people who are in this exact situation. I've been talking about this for years, but it takes so much time and money, and I don't have either of those things right now. But knowing that there are people out there right now, at this very moment, who are going through this, tears me up inside, and I would do anything I could to help them. Eventually, I will start the charity. It's just not the right time yet. Anyways, let's hear Stephen Lett's commentary on the video. Did you see the loyalty the younger son showed by his bringing the matter to the attention of his parents? Did you also notice the loyalty the parents showed by going to the elders for assistance? After the parents were able to talk to the elders, we hope that the older son was able to get the help he needed and that the discipline brought him to his senses. Has your child left Jehovah? Do you blame yourself? If so, remember that Jehovah stood by faithful Samuel, and he'll stand by you. He'll help you endure. I think the message here is pretty clear. You should report on others' misconduct. That's absolutely not a question. If you don't, then you're just as guilty as they are. The parents did the right thing by telling the elders, despite the fact that the kid was going to be quote-unquote disciplined. The only consequences that Jehovah's Witnesses can really impose is shunning. Nothing else is really effective. You can take away some of their quote-unquote privileges, like knocking on doors or answering at the meetings. But really, the whole point behind even doing that is so that everybody 
everybody is fully aware of the fact that you fucked up somehow, and they should keep their distance. Shunning is their best weapon to keep people inside the religion. So no matter what discipline the elders gave to the kid, it was all intended to isolate him more and more from his friends and family members. Now that's either going to force him to throw himself into the religion, or it's going to push him out even further. In my case, it pushed me out even further. When I got this fellowship, I was 18 years old. I had spent age 12 to 15 in total isolation from the outside world. The only people I talked to in that three to four year period were my two parents who both had bipolar disorder. So when I started dealing with social isolation from the religion, I reached out for friendships outside the religion. Whatever it took to not have to go back to complete social isolation. As a result, Jehovah's Witnesses, like my parents, backed further and further away from me until finally I got this fellowship. And I basically haven't had a relationship with a Jehovah's Witness ever since. But I've said this before and I'll say it again. It was the best decision I ever made. The love that comes from Jehovah's Witnesses is completely conditional. It's based on the condition that you keep up with the rules and requirements of the governing body. If you start to slack off, even a little bit, there will be consequences. They'll pre-shun you. They'll back away if they see you backing away. The friends and family I gained after leaving the religion have my back no matter what, and they always will. Their love and friendship is not based on the condition that I follow the arbitrary rules of eight dudes in New York City. They will always be here for me, and we both know it. So if you are one of the people I described in this video, one of the people who I want to help, one of the people that inspires me to start a charity, remember that. Leave the religion. You'll be far better off on the outside. Real friends will have your back through it no matter what. And there are lots of apostates out there, like me, who will always have your back too. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. Although, FYI, I want to point out that I haven't actually started the nonprofit I've been talking about yet. I intend to, but I can't yet. So the Patreon money will just go toward helping me pay my bills right now. When I do decide to start the nonprofit, I'll let everybody know and I'll set up a separate bank account and everything so that the financial information could be made public. Right now, Patreon support only supports me. You can also check out my Etsy store. I sell all kinds of interesting stuff on there. Some of my favorite items are these signs. If you want to keep Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons away, then you can put one of these outside. Jehovah's Witnesses aren't afraid of anything, except apostates. They think apostates are controlled by Satan. And you don't have to be an ex-member to be an apostate either. Anybody critical of the religion is technically considered an apostate. And here's my favorite part. The word apostate comes from the Greek word apostates, meaning runaway slave. So join me in my fight against this religion and keep these people away from people you care about by putting one of these outside your door. Okay, that's all I've got for you. Thanks for watching, guys.